Hey there, this is Handyman007 and welcome to the third and final installment of my DIY sub-irrigated planter video series. So this is the moment we've been waiting for. In this video, I'm going to show you the exact steps how we'll upgrade the raised planter box we built in part 1 and weatherproofed in part 2 into a full-blown sub-irrigated planter or SIP. But before we jump into it, let's take a moment to really understand what a SIP is and appreciate its benefits. A SIP is a generic name for a special type of planting box used in container gardening and commercial landscaping. A SIP is any method of watering plants where the water is introduced from the bottom, allowing the water to soak upwards to the plant through capillary action. A great design will have a convenient way of introducing water from the bottom and a drainage system that would regulate the amount of contained water. SIPs work best during hot seasons because of its ability to store water for long periods of time, while keeping your flowers, succulents, vegetables, and or herbs continuously nourished. When coupled with a drainage system that regulates how much water is stored so that your plants don't drown, SIPs are one of the most effective ways to grow your plants so much faster and healthier. Rain or shine. SIPs are available as commercial products and can range from $100 to $400, depending on the size and features. And that's not even including the popping mix. Just so you know, the SIP we're gonna build is less than $100 and includes everything. So, are you ready to learn how to do it and for how much? Let's go! At the bottom of this raised planter box we built from part 1 and 2, we need to figure out the best way to store water and limit it at a certain level. As such, 5 pieces of 2 inch wide 90 degree PVC elbow joints would be perfect. The first goes here which will hold upright our water intake pipe. The second goes in this corner, the third goes here, the fourth over here, and the fifth right here. and we'll connect them together with pieces of straight PVC pipes to form a pathway for water to run through. So we measure the distance between the joints from bell end to bell end. And from this single 2 inch by 10 feet PVC pipe, we'll cut the different connecting pieces we'll need. Then connect each piece accordingly right after we measure and cut it. If it's difficult to join the pieces snugly, you can use a rubber mallet. For the water intake pipe, it's best to use the bell end of the PVC pipe to give us a larger opening. And now, we can use the remaining PVC pipe as our tail end pipe. We'll cover one end with a plastic mesh from the excess material we used in part 2. This will allow water and air to pass through but prevent gravel from entering the tube later. You can use rubber bands to hold the plastic mesh in place or in this case, I used duct tape. Now, we'll slide this tail end pipe to the last elbow joint to complete our water pathway. Then we take out everything and flip it upside down on a table or platform. With the bottom side of the assembly exposed, we can now conveniently drill small water holes all around. You can be as liberal as you want in drilling the holes, but they should all be restricted at the bottom half of the pipeline. Doing so will prevent gravel and soil from blocking the holes once this assembly is right side up. Now, let's carefully return this assembly into the planter box. Notice you can barely see the holes because they are all at the bottom half of the entire pipeline. So, whenever we feed water in this intake pipe, water flows all the way through the entire pipeline and goes out through all the holes underneath. And because the pipes hug the planter walls and ends in the middle, we are assured that water is always distributed evenly.
Next, we'll make our drainage system. We drill a half-inch hole at the back wall of the planter and all the way through the pond liner and the PVC pipe itself. Once done, it should look like this. Then we take a half-inch plastic tube about 6 inches long. This will serve as our drain hose. Make sure that you cut one end so it looks like this. Then we insert the tube through the hole all the way inside the PVC pipe. Using a waterproofing sealant, we permanently set the tube in place. Finesse the sealant with your finger to make sure there are no gaps and air bubbles. Next, we also seal the gaps between the plastic tube and the pond liner. If the space is too cramped for your fingers, you can use a popsicle stick or chopsticks to finesse the sealant properly. The goal here is to make everything watertight all around, especially the area underneath the tube. After waiting for the sealant to completely dry, it should look similar to this. I know, I know, it isn't a pretty sight, but trust me, it will do the job. Now it's finally time to move this entire planter box to the location my wife requested in part 1. Okay, let's make some space here. It's important to move the planter to your preferred location before putting stuff into it. Otherwise, it will become too heavy to lift. It's also critical that all sides of the planter are leveled. You can either eyeball it or use a spirit level as what I'm using here. I'm inserting appropriately sized stones under a couple of the legs to compensate for the uneven ground here. Doing this step will later on ensure a consistent water level to all sides of the planter box. Now it's time to test our system. Let's fill the planter with water. At this point, it doesn't matter if you feed it through the water intake pipe or directly at the flooring. What's important is to observe if the water level is the same on all sides. If not, adjust the angle of the planter box further so it rests perfectly leveled. But I'm seeing even distribution, so I believe I leveled this planter right the first time. Now it's time to pour in gravel and fill up evenly until the bottom half of the pipe assembly is completely covered. Continuously spray with water so the gravel is cleansed and its dust particles are washed out at the back through our drain hose. Now it's time to pour potting mix on top of the layer of gravel. My wife already filled up the planter with potting mix and stopped halfway. Because for the top half, she wanted to mix rice husks with the potting mix to prevent it from clumping together. This way, there's always enough air in between the particles. And after filling up the box all the way to the edge of the pond liner and transferring her plantings, this is how everything looks like. This is just the first day, and it seems like the plants are loving their new home. Let me explain something real quick. All the plants on this side here, we have to water every day for them to stay alive, especially during summer. But on this side here, we only had to water one time in the beginning and the soil remains moist even after several hours under the hot sun. Here's day 7. The cherry tomatoes have grown so much taller, my wife had to strap the stems against support sticks. The chili pepper's leaves are fuller and greener. The leeks are more upright. And we haven't even added water since day 1. You wanna see more progress? Here's day 13. 
the chili peppers have grown taller and greener. The cherry tomatoes are now even taller than their support sticks. The lettuce leaves have come a long way from being humble sprouts. And we have actually already harvested some of the leeks and added them as ingredients to our lunch meal on that same day. By the way, if you're curious how much everything cost from building the planter in part 1, to weatherproofing it in part 2, and finally upgrading it to a fully functioning SIP system here in part 3, here it is. Now, is it all worth it? I'd like to know your opinion in the comments below. Did you find this video series helpful? Give it a thumbs up! If you aren't already, be sure to subscribe and enable the bell icon so you're notified first about my future home DIY videos. Subscribing is completely free. Meanwhile, may I suggest watching the videos on the right or if you don't see them, check out more videos listed in the description below. This is Handyman007. Thanks for watching.